right? So we are recording the session. And moreover, I am going to live stream the session on Facebook. So let me just write. Okay, here we go. So live stream in progress. And then I will have to uh, write, make sure that it doesn't, the live stream doesn't disturb our session. Okay. Make sure that it doesn't, the live stream, Okay, that's the way I meant it, because then the, the, the voice is kind of doubled. Okay, it's exactly 20.30. Uh, uh, nice to have you all here. I would like to start by saying a few words about Tamari, and then, uh, and then we, will, we will ask Tamari to inspire us with her expertise. So Dr. Tamari Dolidze is Associate Professor of Batumi State Maritime Academy in Georgia, as she has already informed us, in the Faculty of Business and communication, which is very important. And uh, since 2020, she has been elected as an associate professor of the online university in Pegaso International Group, which is based in Malta. And this, the, the leading subject here is communications and language philosophy. She has also been a guest lecturer, visiting professor, uh, in, uh, in the area of legal English, very valuable, I'm sure, for many of us, and the business communications at foreign universities. She has also participated um, in Erasmus Teaching Mobility Program. She, uh, as far as the written side of her activity is concerned, she is a reviewer of the International Journal for, of Linguistics, Language and Culture and organizational committee member of Eurasian Multidisciplinary Forum, a member of the editorial team of the International Journal of Knowledge and Learning, a member of International Journal of Digital Humanities, and uh, uh, a plenary speaker at all kinds of international conferences. And I would like to remind all of you uh, who are participating in this webinar, that Tamari has been already cooperating with us uh, for more than a year. And last year, she offered two webinars, the titles of which I'm going to make available in the chat box so that those of you who are interested in those topics will be able to find the, the recordings of these two webinars on our YouTube channel. And that is Raising Media Literacy in uh, ESP Classroom with Authentic Materials. Very useful, a lot of uh, hints how to use uh, these materials. And then Creating of Authenticity in Legal English Classroom via News Articles. So they are available on IATF uh, um, Facebook, uh, but also YouTube channel. Today's webinar, which is titled Teaching 21st Century Skills uh, in ESP Classroom Through Debates, is a very important one. And uh, Tamari, in her summary, has reminded us that debates provide collaborative and cooperative learning environment, and they enrich class discussions, personalize learning, and thanks to them, we can practice all four Cs creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. And the talk will concern importance, challenges, and last but not least, best practices used at the, at the example of business, in, business and legal English classes in tertiary education. So over to you, Tamari. Thank you, dear Lucina. Uh, thank you for introducing me to the public, to um, a pool of people, uh, so full of EFL community representatives from many countries, not only Poland. I see some familiar faces from previous webinars, and it's my great pleasure to be welcoming you. Uh, by the way, I see my colleague from Georgia, Batumi State Maritime Academy, and it's great that uh, these webinars are becoming a very important pool of uh, gathering of ideas, exchanging expertise and knowledge, and at the same time, putting them into practice. 
And I really hope that we'll be meeting some of you in next IETFL co conference in Poland, uh, because uh, during my previous conference in Krotoshin, I was really happy that uh, some colleagues of yours from different cities like Krakow, they were able, able like to recognize me. That's why I, I'm really happy that thanks to you, I really gained very important pool of ideas and colleagues and contacts persons. And today, uh, as you have mentioned, it will be not my first webinar, but you, uh, I decide, decided to uh, kind of like introduce my modest expertise in uh, incorporate, incorporating 21st century skills in EFL classroom, in my case, ESP classroom. Uh, since maybe I will tell uh, a few words about myself that I'm teaching mostly English for specific purposes. At the same time, my basic affiliated institution is Batumi State Maritime Academy, Faculty of uh, so, uh, Business Management, but I'm also managing foreign language uh, department. Uh, we are serve, serve navigation faculty, also faculty of uh, business management and engineering, but still we, I do teach business English, business communication, also legal English. And at the same time, I think that not only for ESP classes, but also for our other classes. Uh, so we, we do have to uh, so boost 21st century skills. So that's why in today's webinar, uh, once again, I will be touching this topic, yes. And uh, just to give you a short overview, uh, overview of this, uh, my, my interest towards uh, uh, debating. Uh, so I, I was participant of a um, uh, very interesting program, which was uh, funded by uh, United States uh, um, uh, International Association of Education. Uh, so the, during pandemic 2020, and I was uh, elected as a trainer of uh, mentees from different public schools from Georgia. And I was training them in uh, um, how to uh, suppose their 21st century skills, such as critical thinking. That's why my interest towards integrating uh, so critical thinking, and in, in our case, like uh, debating, it's a kind of associated uh, due to my experience of giving some trainings. That's why during this one hour uh, webinar, I will be kind of uh, showing you uh, how to plan uh, some of um, our classes and why is it important to uh, so integrate uh, so debating and uh, it's a part of critical thinking. So first of all, during this webinar, I, I will be kind of doing my best in order to make it interactive. I will be asking some questions, maybe also uh, asking you to use some chat. Uh, uh, but first of all, uh, we I will ma maybe remind you what is debating. I'm sure it has some, uh, definitely, you are already familiar with it. And uh, how uh, debating can be applied as a productive skill in 20 uh, EFL classroom, English as a foreign language classroom, and how do I do in my, in my experience and so yeah, which 21st century and language skills can they improve? Yes, in our case, as a result of debating. So if there are no questions, no comments, I, I will be doing my best in order to control the chat, but still I will move or uh, get down to business. First of all, uh, so, um, uh, you know, during our, uh, so when you're presenting uh, so, uh, so some abstract of my talk, I, it was more or less a 4C, uh, but uh, recently, 21st century skills uh, um, are, are associated with a 6C. This 6C, of course, it starts with a collaboration, communication, creativity, critical thinking. But nowadays, a little bit more of focus has been attached to a character and a citizenship. That's why I uh, saw so 21st century skills. Uh, it's not only limited to four Cs, but uh, somehow it's being also uh, so increased to six Cs. This is not novelty, but it is one of the most important uh, ideas uh, and uh, which is related to the idea of uh, uh, integrating uh, so 21st century and in our case, critical thinking in our classes. But, but um, uh, so uh, when uh, and do I use uh, debates and uh, how do I use uh, which ESP courses uh, should teach debates? This, this is a question. Uh, which I uh, sometimes ask uh, to my colleagues, and I will be really happy to hear uh, some responses uh, on these questions in the chat. So uh, do you teach debates? And if yes, how do you teach and when in which subjects? Uh, with this purpose, uh, before you are answering, uh, so I will be uh, so moving to another slide and I will give you some kind of a little bit historical background of teaching and the origin of debates. First of all, uh, if I 
ask a question, of course, and of course, uh, uh, it's it's very easily uh, to be answered. I am sure uh, you are all teachers, and uh, you use uh, maybe some kind of a part of debates in class. Uh, uh, and uh, but of course, still, it's debates. It's related to discussing ideas and argumentation and school of rhetoric, different appeals, and uh, uh, of course, um, for me, debates um, is uh, related, to, and of course, it's not only for me to uh, Greece and the philosopher, one of the very important philosophers from Greek, uh, Greek, uh, Greek philosophers, um, Socrates mentions that when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. This is a kind of uh, quotation which once again shows um, the power of debate at the same time challenge of debates and uh, of course debates in non-native language can be even more challenging. That's why when we try, when we plan to um, kind of integrate debates in our classes, so whether it's an ESP class or general English class, of course we, it needs lots of consideration, uh, prior planning and prior uh, kind of even like um, uh, so preparation. But of course, uh, when we talk about the history of debates, once again, let us remember that debating in various forms has a long history and it traces back, traces back to the philosophical school of ancient Greece, such as Athenian democracy and also in ancient Indian democracy. And modern forms of debates and establishment of debating societies or culture, uh, it's a um, kind of dates back uh, to the age of enlightenment um, let's take in the 18th century. I see still people are uh, so joining us. Thank you for joining, and I see, and I will be really doing my best to, in order to meet your expectation. And when we talk about uh, so teaching debates, uh, first of all, debating is um, a very, very much important, uh, especially uh, in ESP, whether this is maritime English, whether it's a uh, uh, so whether it's uh, like a business English or legal English, first of all, because I do teach, first of all, uh, I started teaching debates, first of all, in my, my so illegal English class uh, as a part of production activity, productive activity, and I try to incorporate debates, uh, uh, so due to some recent topics in legal discussions, but at the same time, currently we were revising some kind of maritime uh, so curriculum, and uh, together with our international partners, we found it very interesting that debate skills, critical thinking skills, can be also very easily and uh, improved uh, when teaching different uh, maritime cases uh, as a result of discussion and as a result of debating. That's why, uh, let's once again, and of course in business cases, debating is very important when we talk and when we discuss the topics of different economic uh, so, you know, occurrences in our country, I used to be uh, using debates uh, via authentic materials again. Uh, but uh, debating is once again uh, very important in order to help students develop the the critical thinking, but does not need to be reserved for debating club only. That's why uh, after attending myself uh, uh, the course which was given by United States Embassy uh, about critical thinking, they encourage us once again to in integrate debate in our classes. So that's why from 2020 this interest definitely has grown into my uh, teaching pr practice. But it can be at the same time same time quite tricky to know where to start uh, uh, to introduce the uh, debating in our classroom. What, what topics should be discussed? What are the steps in debates? How do I stop it turning into an argument? Yes, uh, because sometimes debating can be definitely uh, turn into animated discussion, uh, even like, a, and it can be like a, a kind of like a maybe uh, floor for confrontation between our students. That's why we should not uh, turn it into fight, but try to make a very nice balanced uh, so, uh, debate club. That's why this guide, definitely, uh, I will try to answer all these questions. First of all, let's agree about the benefits of debates. Uh, and it's very important, once again, to remember that debates help uh, to sharpen critical thinking, at the same time, refine, refine our communication skills, one of four, six C's, and improve problem solving, which is very, very important and challenging uh, in the 21st century. But of course, a healthy debate can teach young people, also not only university level students, but also debate, teaching debates in also in, in uh, so secondary education, not only higher education can be very, very productive. And of course, it, it will help our students to find creative solutions in a polarized world. Yeah, yes, whether this can be topic, uh, any kind of topics of like even 
the sustainable development goals or like any kind, kind of issues, this can be very important uh, spring for developing our critical thinking. But in today's uh, society, young people are kind of plagued with opportunities for poor debate to arise uh, because sometimes social media even, uh, they are kind of fought with hateful words, hatred speech, all conceived points of reason and beliefs, but teaching young people strong debate skills enables them to identify credible sources at the same time worthwhile perspectives from non-credible ones and uh, it will teach them to incorporate those into their opinion and this is very important culture and growing them into 21st century citizens it also helps our uh, so learners to recognize unhelpful inauthentic and poorly constructed points of view i hope that i am not giving you too much uh, some theory but Still, I'm trying to highlight uh, benefits uh, from uh, some experienced colleagues, but of course, it not only helps our students to engage in critical thinking and problem solving, but also builds their confidence, yes, and also uh, makes them a kind of a, um, uh, so proficient in speaking, uh, uh, in separating the useful from the malignant, teaching good debate skills also bolsters people uh, to form solid judgment on the world around them. This is very important. And to do this, it's vital to teach children to break down hypotheses into all these comprising arguments rather than taking polarized tenses or any, any other issues. This will be very much important when teaching debates. And again, just to summarize the benefits of debating, this includes once again improved critical thinking, increase uh, information it, it, uh, retention skill and also uh, very good argumentation empathy for other ideas so kind of this is very important to respect yes uh, other ideas and structured thought training this will be also taught and having lots of fun this can be also one of the benefits of uh, integrating debates into our cl classroom and uh, at the same time uh, it's very important for us uh, to uh, so uh, to see that uh, it gives us kind of uh, interest it stimulates interest in current events uh, update them about current issues whether it's a political economic legal issues or like a maritime industry related issues uh, at the same time develops critical thinking, sharpens communication skills, once again improves researching abilities. This is very important because when students are preparing debate topics, they do need to uh, research, do background work, research activity, and this is very much important for at the same time boosting the analytical thinking skills. And uh, last and not least, it highlights and uh, uh, increases understanding of how change occurs in a democratic society. Okay, this is our one of the benefits of teaching debates. And um, uh, let's uh, once again, uh, so highlight that I have pros of debates. As we say, there are even not even cons. This is a kind of very important essay in grammar practice helps also with the public speaking and believe me, uh, during a uh, so public speaking class, which I give in business communication class, debates can be very important, especially in negotiation, whether it's a kind of business setting, etc. And of course, the students uh, will be able to construct an argument, work in teams, also practice their logical reasoning, uh, research skills, social practice, and, and uh, other points. No budget is required, no administrator, not uh, maybe sometimes uh, there can be no flint metro language competition, but of course this can be very many minimal, minimal amount of uh, so uh, cons of debates. Okay, uh, before uh, I move to uh, so uh, to my uh, experience of uh, uh, so debating, uh, so I would like to ask you a small question. Uh, and um, what are basic debate skills and steps? Uh, but uh, these are a kind of uh, so question which I'm going to raise, uh, but as, as I see, we have really very big number of participants in today's uh, so webinar. Let me try to uh, give some uh, uh, so information. First of all, uh, when teaching debates, uh, uh, I think that uh, students uh, can be given kind of training or guidance yes they need to get prepared uh, how to uh, start debating because this is uh, first of all it requires a uh, uh, sufficient sufficient or adequate language proficiency and fluency and but of course there are some steps which uh, need to be uh, so introduced to students to our learners in advance first of all 
Uh, students need to know how to open the idea. And what does it mean? In a classroom uh, debate, we are also not putting one side against another. It's not definitely our intention, yes? Uh, but uh, this can be, uh, so uh, sometimes maybe it's tempting to enter into a for and against, but polarizing a debate cuts out room for innovative perspectives you may not have considered. This can be one, uh, one of the very important uh, steps, but open discussions to the class with the phrases such as, what do you think about X, yes? Or how do you think the people at X feel about it, why? And this opens a debate rather than shutting it into two opposing cages. So that's why, uh, what do you think about this opinion? This can be very much important uh, opening an idea. So question which will help uh, the uh, students to prepare their own argument and then divide them into the uh, so different parties, like uh, uh, parties who uh, okay, support this idea and parties who definitely uh, so not support uh, this idea. Uh, and so the, what is important, uh, another step, which is uh, should be also uh, taken, this is how to evidence the uh, idea. Often we get caught in a trap of confirmation bias. There are different biases. We should all uh, remember in those so science, we should also acknowledge uh, that our students also uh, are not definitely biased, but still uh, there are some confirmation biases where we find evidence to prove our opinion is correct. This can teach us to become unwittingly close-minded people or persons. But this is particularly poignant when considering that social media nowadays or algorithms only give young people news, yes, let's say news, which supports what they are uh, kind of like, uh, what they already like or believe. Yes, this is kind of like, uh, this is what, what they mostly uh, maybe listen and watch what they already like and support. But instead we should be encouraging our students to craft their opinions through evidence they find from multiple sources, yes? Not from the sources which they like, which they uh, find it close to uh, matching their interests, not. This can be, different newspapers, authentic materials, uh, academic articles, etc. This should be definitely credible uh, sources. And by looking at the diversity of uh, uh, opinions uh, and by analyzing credibility of other sources, uh, students can be uh, can, can be forming a kind of a constructive opinion and this will definitely uh, encourage and develop their constructive, uh, so, uh, constructive uh, so skills. But in this sense, encouraging our students to delve into the topic and find anything they can on it. This can be very nice uh, idea by comparing each piece of evidence. Uh, this is one of the uh, another one of the steps which should be definitely um, uh, so uh, taught. Uh, another one is what's good from looking through the evidence. Uh, what can people find to be about uh, this given topic? First of all, it's a good idea to encourage them to look from all different viewpoints and to find positive factors and future opportunities or prospects, yes, from this, uh, uh, from this point. Another one is what's bad. Students should be able to uh, kind of filter information what's good from what's bad. And uh, in this case, we can have our class pinpoint at least five big points around the topic in general. Yes, and next uh, we can have them break down the positive points and identify any arguments against this. But at the same time, we should look for threats to this positive outcome and what could pose as a future issue. This can be very interesting uh, so step. Another point is to present and to discuss. So this is already presenting and discussion, uh, discussion like a presentation practice uh, and mostly practice and production stage. And in, in this stage, uh, we should allow our student a set a time uh, uh, to talk about the point of view and um, follow this up with questions uh, which encourages kind of the perspective and you know, which is followed by a few uh, that you know, critique or criticizes. And after you know, this, um, yeah, your opinion should be offered and uh, we should allow our class to do the same. Okay, this is step number five. And uh, of course, in, uh, one of the most important like uh, steps of uh, uh, teaching debate is to find a solution. Yes, yeah, solution, which is, uh, maybe maybe mutually beneficial, maybe this can be non, this is definitely shouldn't be partially beneficial. But the point of the debate is a 
definitely finding a solution that works, workable one. Uh, that's in this case, we should try to find a collaborative way of coming to an answer, which incorporates as many of the ideas that have been discussed in the classroom. Uh, and uh, this will be key to set kind of parameters for feedback here, and people will understand the impact of the solution uh, has, which is definitely uh, so, uh, followed by this stage. <clears throat> Now uh, I'm going to uh, again uh, show you another step. Which is definitely related to teaching debating skill. Do you hear the video? I can't hear anything, no voice. Only one term that requires clarification, the death penalty. A reasonable definition of the death penalty is an execution ordered by a court of law or state sanctioned entity as a form of criminal punishment. This distinguishes the death penalty from execution without a judicial or legal process. Next, the proposition will offer their case line. In this debate, the proposition's case line is The death penalty is a cruel, inhumane and irreversible punishment that no government or individual should ever have the power to execute. In a real WSDC, now the proposition would outline their case, introducing the arguments they intend to present as well as the individuals who will present them. The first proposition speaker would then present their first two arguments. For the purposes of this example, however, let's keep it simple and jump ahead to the proposition's first argument. The proposition's first argument is the death penalty violates the individual's fundamental human right to life. Therefore, any government that kills an offender as punishment is committing a human rights violation. Now the proposition would elaborate on this argument with examples and evidence, as well as I think for some reason it stopped. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, let me summarize. Yes, it was mm -hmm. one of the uh, steps, uh, yes, of uh, debate skills. I think it was. Okay, let me proceed of this. Therefore, any government with examples and evidence, as well as provide a second argument. But for our purposes, we can skip to the opposition's turn. <laughs> As the opposition, we must try to challenge this argument in what's called a rebuttal. We probably can't deny that life is a fundamental human right, but we can expose holes in their argument by pointing out exceptions. If we can offer examples in which people have justifiably had their human rights revoked for the benefit of society and others' well-being, we can prove that the proposition's argument isn't always valid. So, here's our first rebuttal. If a person attacks a child and the only way to save the child is to kill the attacker, then taking that person's life is justified. By threatening another person's life, the child's, the attacker has revoked his or her right to life. Likewise, if the offender poses a threat to others' lives by being alive himself or herself, whether in prison or within society, then he or she has forfeited the right to life. Now we can present our own case line. Governments should be empowered to enforce the death penalty in the most extreme cases of murderers incapable of being rehabilitated as the death penalty provides the best possible recourse to guarantee public safety and justice. This case line provides our parameters for allowing the death penalty, only the most extreme cases of murderers, as well as a nod to the reasons why we believe this is the best solution. 
The case line is then followed by our outline of our arguments, as well as an introduction of the speakers who will present them. But let's just move ahead to the first argument against the motion. Furthermore, many consider a sentence of life in prison even less humane than the death penalty, as life in prison is a sentence of lifelong suffering and restriction. We can provide evidence in the form of quotes from criminal justice experts, as well as testimony from criminals sentenced to life without the possibility of parole, who attest they would have preferred the death sentence. Now it's your turn. Do you have a rebuttal? Do you have another argument in favour or against the motion? With a partner, decide who will represent the proposition and who will represent the opposition and try to finish the debate yourselves. So, this was instructional video, actually, which I use uh, with my students uh, before starting the debates, because definitely it gives some ideas how to start, how to uh, construct prop so proposition and different kind of uh, steps, which are definitely essential when teaching debates. So, more or less, I did my best in order more or less to show you what are like benefits of debates, uh, how this can be structured. And now, of course, when we talk about um, uh, um, integrating debates, it's in our classroom, whether it's like a tertiary education or whether it's a secondary education. I'm sure there are some school teachers, which I see nowadays. Now also my colleague from Georgia, Nino, who is running Language Center, and I'm sure she definitely even uh, so integrates debates uh, from younger learners. Uh, but of course, uh, when teaching the so debates and when it's planning how to integrate effectively debates in our teaching experience in tertiary education, for example, in my case, it's very important to think about uh, topics, yes? And of course, topics, this can be different based on our uh, so curriculum, based on our like academic program. Uh, that's why um, uh, we should definitely, uh, it, of course, it serves the purpose of uh, uh, so boosting and developing our students' productive skills, uh, such as speaking mostly, critical thinking, and of course, but at the same time, this can be, of course, very much uh, combined with teaching subject, uh, so subject matter. That's why, uh, uh, so we definitely need to take some kind of uh, um, time and uh, think about good debate topics. Uh, uh, but of course, there are, nowadays in the 21st century, we have access to lots of a uh, variety of information, but of course, there are plenty of topics to discuss. Uh, and of course, this can be engaging to our pupils, students, in a real life subjects, uh, um, yeah, yeah, this can be topics which affect their lives uh, and uh, in order to better then navigate them into the, uh, so the world around them. But of course, often adult newspapers talk about complex politics and economics. Not only are these subjects a little bit hard for children, especially and uh, young learners, and at the same time, maybe even, uh, but for university level students, it's still okay, but they also, this can be quite boring, yes, and irrelevant to their lives. Instead, it's very important to find age appropriate subject, which can help them to kind of like a, uh, so get motivated with patient. And at the same time, this can help them to form solid opinions fueled by curiosity and interest and a desire to solve the problem. This can be very much important because debating about the topic which is not interesting uh, and which definitely does not lead to kind of like a, a feasible solutions definitely will not um, interest our students and, uh, and learners. Uh, that's why, uh, so uh, as I see my colleague Lino is writing that young learners do love participating in debates because nowadays, especially in my uh, countries, uh, so, uh, reality uh, debate is associated to political issues and uh, that's why uh, so they even try to act like politicians and to solve problems uh, so because they love to be part of decision makers at the same time they feel that sense of uh, citizenship this is very important and as i have mentioned this is one of uh, so 21st century skills like citizenship together with critical thinking collaboration communication uh, so collaboration and uh, uh, so uh, this 
are also very important. And uh, of course, uh, the topics, uh, of course, can be also brainstormed and can be elected by students. But of course, uh, sometimes they can, be, they can be given this choice. But of course, uh, this should be definitely finally decided by us. But of course, this can be violent video games. For example, recently I was do doing debates uh, with my legal English class uh, about the topic of uh, uh, so uh, so food crime, yes, uh, which is very uh, no, no, not maybe co getting common in my country, but as a result of economic crisis, maybe this can be one of the uh, quite uh, so common problem. At the same time, topics of uh, um, gun control. At the same time, marijuana legalization is very very uh, so hot topic in legal English class, uh, which I uh, so do yeah, for my debating, uh, especially uh, in tertiary education when teaching legal English, uh, and many, many topics, yes, related to social media, uh, especially yeah, for with the younger learners, it can be school uniforms, because maybe not all of them nowadays feel comfortable, but at the same time, there can be a part of students who definitely feel comfortable wearing uniforms, yes. So that's why this can be a variety of topics uh, like immigration. Yes, nowadays ongoing war in Ukraine. This is a uh, inevitable, yes, a topic for debates, yes. And of course, a uh, future extraterrestrial expedition, Ali Ki Ali, yes, I fully agree. Mm, depending on our learners' interests, yes, in navigation, with navigation top, uh, students, it can be definitely different topics, but still uh, depending on the class we are meeting, depending on the level, uh, top topics, uh, this can be different definitely uh, selected uh, from a variety of sources, but this should be definitely interesting for our learners. This is very important and we should make sure. Yes. And when we talk about um, the topics of de de debating skills, uh, First of all, style is very important. Let's let's do recap. Uh, style is, is the manner. I see Agnieszka is uh, coming. Thank you for joining, Agnieszka. And uh, style is the manner in which you communicate your arguments. And speed is very important because uh, this is um, also defines the uh, talk at pace, which is fast enough to sound intelligent. And at the same time, it's very important that we should allow uh, so our students to use this uh, time in order to say express themselves. But at the same time, they should slow enough to be easily understood. Tone is very important, volume in debating. Yes, diction also, language clarity, fluency. That's why I think that the students definitely uh, improve not only their like uh, argumentation skills, but of course their public speaking skills. And it's, it can be very much encouraging, yes, uh, for students, especially for adult learners. And once again, good to debate topics, yeah, provide uh, chances to the learners uh, to practice critical thinking. And uh, while there are plenty of topics to discuss engaging our people in a real life subject, uh, which affect their lives, this can be uh, very important uh, uh, so the topics. Uh, but at the same, same time, it's our teacher's uh, role and position to uh, so to instill strong debate and negotiation skills in the students. Uh, they teach so they can form solid judgment about the world as they move into the adulthood. With this in mind, finding strong controversial cues from our, our class everyday life helps us to create relatable, relatably debate uh, related topics, uh, which incite and uh, so kind of stimulate passion. And it's easier to stimulate any kind of analytical and research because they need to debate and communicate their opinions effectively. This is really very important. And once again, I'm talking about this, that I think that, um, uh, uh, so of course, uh, when students uh, so, uh, come to our ESP class, uh, and uh, this depends definitely on the like uh, uh, secondary school instructor, when they have this already developed debate skills, uh, this definitely is in our work and workload. This is very important for us. Uh, that's why I think the debates should be definitely uh, developed from uh, not only you know, from university level tertiary education, but of course from secondary education as well. So uh, one of the very important topics uh, which I do encourage even my you know, so tertiary education students, this is uh, junk food. I think that junk food is a quite controversial uh, topic uh, for all ages, for uh, so all levels of uh, so population, but of course, junk food not only contributes uh, significantly to obesity, but also uh, lack of nutrients, also in high kind of concentration of 
uh, preservations and sugar also affects our thinking power. So in this sense, it can be kind of uh, so background which can be given to our students. For example, in general English class, when we discuss the topic of food, my colleagues say uh, sometimes we have uh, this topic of food. This can be very interesting topic for debates, yes? And uh, uh, students will be asked to discuss the topics by asking our class what they think about replacing junk food in hospital vending machines. Yes, why not increasing tax on junk food, imposing an age limit on certain junk foods, making diets on mandatory um, and for obese children and looking glasses being also cooking class classes. This can be also mandatory. This can be one of the discussion topics and growing a school garden uh, for canteen, uh, growing yes, in ingredients for canteens. This can be one of the topics of discussion. So uh, another topic, uh, which can be also very interesting, this can be mobile phone use Usage, usage and our addiction, even as a, like a, not only students, but of course, even instructors and uh, so uh, even teaching staff. Uh, and uh, technology nowadays definitely has infiltrated our lives in ways that we could never have imagined, but still uh, we do, our students and even our yeah, so universities, they sometimes use instead of course books, phones because every, everything is uploaded they can open uh, so electronic books but at the same time it increases a kind of addiction and um, uh, they are no longer like uh, uh, so uh, interested in uh, so uh, carrying books but still uh, so mobile, so to open the debates about mobile phones we can ask uh, um, around about the opinions whether mobile phones do more harm than good yes the possibility of being addicted to smartphones yes and it, this is definitely already a addiction and i think it doesn't even need uh, so lots of debating but still should there be more laws controlling what people can access and uh, on the phones and staying friends without mobile uh, for phones allowing children to use social media etc this can be uh, so topics for discussion which can be open opened uh, and and of course, uh, as Ali says, I think he thinks it's far beyond the use of mobile phones. Now the trend is yes, using at yes, this is very much AR in uh, some uh, phones. I agree, Ali. But homework debate. This was one of the topics which was uh, suggested by different authors. Uh, but of course, I cannot tell you that I, I use a, a debate about. Uh, so uh, phones, but still this can be very interesting, yes. Homework debates, yes. For example, nowadays, uh, um, uh, as a result of like maybe a new approach, uh, a much majority of the work is done in, in classes, but uh, the workload for both students and teachers is definitely already strenuous. I mean, is homework really necessary or is it waste of time? In this case, children often have lots of say, and it's very important to do these debates, uh, maybe among young learners, even among university level students, tertiary education. Why not? I think this can be definitely uh, interesting. So, uh, yes, thank you, Jakub. Uh, and another topic, which is also uh, nowadays, for example, I visited recently a good conference in Napoli, and football is very much animated uh, so uh, so like a topic even uh, among my students because our Georgian player is performing well in uh, so Italian teams that's why football is a, uh, one of the favorite topics not only among um, yes male students but of course even, uh, even uh, female depending if there is a so world championship times that's why uh, so that's why if we uh, kind of uh, you, provoke interests among our students, different kind of uh, so topics. Uh, football can be one of the best. Uh, and of course, whether footballers get paid too much, yes, this can be topic, we, uh, which types of advertising should be allowed. Uh, so during like a tournaments or matches, the pay gap between men and women football players like a gender equality, racism in international football, yes, compulsory charitable donations. And I'm sure definitely, Students will definitely generate lots of arguments on this topic, and it will be very interesting for them to discuss and debate on this topic. Yes, good. Uh, okay, another interesting and one of my favorite topic, and this can be very effectively integrated into maritime English class or with the business English class, whether when I talk about circular economy, and this can be about environment. The hot topic of today is that uh, um, our class definitely 
no doubt have heard about Extinction Rebellion and school strikes, but this is a perfect opportunity to, to talk about a topic relevant to both young people and the general population as a world. The current events also show uh, young people that the power of coherent voice, no matter the age and status, is very important. But when it comes to climate change, environmental debates, we should try to open maybe discussion by fines for recycling. For example, still I do you know, use lots of recycling tip topic because I was myself like a year, some years ago involved in waste management project with Swedish companies. It's why this, I really love the using and boosting this topic because at the same time it meets uh, one of sustainable development goals. And it's very important for example, government subsidies for fossil fuel companies, use of chemicals in agriculture, humans as the cause of climate change free public transportation like uh, commuting of uh, for example in my city we are suffering from a huge problem of traffic it's a smooth city but still people drive a lot and of course this can be a very interesting topic for discussion and i'm sure uh, you do it enjoy it doing it sustainability yes i exactly agree uh, dear fernando yes i i do uh, use sustainable development goals at least try to address them in, in one of my classes. So, and great, so of course, this can be assessment, one of the biggest headache, and even like a tertiary education student, even in a secondary education students, this can be uh, very interesting to open conversation about uh, different topics. And uh, for example, abolishing grades, grades being easier than years before, subjectivity of grading system, yes, because not, not always they are definitely objective. What would replace grading system incorporating extracurricular curricular activities into grading system and using tests to determine I think this can be very much uh, workable with uh, tertiary education students my my uh, colleagues agree because sometimes even uh, when planning our new academic year we do also consult with our students and such kind of debates on this topic will help a lot so this is my one of my like uh, takeaways uh, and uh, yeah, very interesting topics this is uh, I think for for all level students home life uh, because while debating world uh, topics is important but encouraging children to master the art of debates uh, and negotiation in their own lives help them to get better manured in a world after certain ages but teaching uh, children these skills uh, to debate and negotiate like uh, with household uh, duties bedtimes pocket money uh, we create future adults uh, which definitely can discuss pay rises working hours yes flexible hours etc and relationship uh, buildings etc and uh, some topics the students and even pupils can talk about i agree some colleagues will agree this can be age appropriate rewards for duties, household chores, uh, need for pocket money, screen time before bed, bedtimes, distance, they are allowed to travel alone, yeah, and, and part-time jobs for younger people, yes, or limited age, yes, this can be also very interesting, yes, good, and migration, different uh, globalization topics, different which are also offered by you are very interesting, I fully agree, and uh, summer holidays, this can be also interesting, and it's also interesting to uh, listen to uh, our uh, young people's opinion about the benefits of longer summer holidays and downsize it at the same time, replacing long summer holidays with a week holiday once a month. Yes, it can be an interesting topic. And uh, for example, how long summer holidays affect poor families, banning family holidays in term uh, time and compulsory work experiences can be also incorporated in this uh, uh, so point and benefits of summer schools. This can be also an interesting topic, yes, in order to try to. And of course, last and not least, uh, politics is, can be, um, uh, so of course, uh, inevitable uh, topic for debates. Uh, uh, for example, my country, uh, in my country, there is all, all, always something to uh, discuss and debate uh, about politics. And of course, at the same time, of course, we should avoid topics uh, um, and we should def definitely kind of uh, uh, some uh, boost or progress or kind of like a, uh, some try to avoid you know, just confrontation because even uh, during like uh, legal English classes, I definitely, in my experience, uh, there are different uh, uh, some representatives of different uh, electorate system that 
that's why it's very important to uh, at the same time to integrate but to avoid uh, the topics of politics but make it neutral yes women women rights yes and different kind of uh, so judicial rights it can be also very much uh, important topics for uh, debates uh, and debating in the ESL classroom I think that I don't have enough time today to show this video uh, because I really would like uh, to show you uh, today uh, so about how to teach yes debate and in uh, so in the last uh, I think I have got 10 minutes I will do my best in order to show you how to plan debates on a kind of topic which is uh, which can be uh, so uh, related to the topic of citizenship and at the same time as I mentioned uh, from the very beginning of today's webinar citizenship nowadays represents one of the uh, six see 21st century skills uh, and let's teach debate yes debates with the skills uh, first of all lesson plan uh, of debates uh, which is one of the debates which i did during my critical thinking training and uh, so i taught this debate uh, topic to my mentees from a secondary school of my region and they did it in the classroom and they also recorded and they really enjoyed doing and they also reported to me back uh, that it really worked well with the students. Uh, the topic was, um, uh, for example, uh, so religion and belief uh, and in my, in my region, which is uh, definitely, uh, so we, are, we have uh, people with different religious confessions, but still we are tolerant people, we do exist, but still there are some kind of religious just minorities which still have this uh, so problem and uh, it really uh, is a kind of uh, animated topic for discussion and uh, debates uh, and um, uh, here slim can be also discrimination and tolerance together with the citizenship and participation uh, in taking joint decisions uh, so that's why uh, yes um, uh, thank you very much Nino so uh, group size uh, uh, for this um, uh, for this class was um, around 30 because majorly in major like in secondary schools uh, in public schools in my region uh, so they are they are limited to 30 students and time this can be used uh, during two hour classes uh, let's take like a two hour and two hour club and over you this activity definitely explored a dispute over the building of a new mosque uh, yes, uh, in a traditional Christian area in, a, for the, in, in our region, and uh, at the same time through the simulation of a town council meeting. So students uh, uh, during this debate class, they were like uh, doing mock uh, meeting, the yeah, simulated town council meeting, and, uh, and because of this, uh, the following related rights were discussed, freedom from discrimination, freedom of religion and belief, freedom of opinion and information. Okay, and uh, um, based on it, uh, so objectives of the, the lesson was to experience real conflicts which can arise in meeting uh, the needs of diverse communities. At the same time, uh, one of the objectives was to explore the right to freedom of religion and belief and to develop skills of debate and analysis. And materials, uh, this debate, uh, luckily, this was done after pandemic because uh, as I have mentioned, critical thinking uh, training, uh, which, which was only fully uh, online uh, so conducted uh, to my mentees. But uh, after this uh, in 2021, uh, already schools opened and students uh, so were uh, so actually engaged in debates in these mock debates in, in person. So of course, sheets of paper, uh, flip charts paper was used, uh, uh, watch lock and small bill for the mayor. So this is a kind of a so surrounding setting uh, and uh, uh, preparation, of course, uh, this included um, different kind of role cards in the handouts in the form which describes the problem and the rule of debates. And it's very important to prepare name tags for different parties and groups that will be represented at the meeting of this uh, uh, town hall uh, meeting. And uh, at the same time, uh, so different roles were listed on a flip chart so that the, anyone could see them. So make sure that the, uh, you have a space for the council meeting and separate place spaces for the different groups. Yes, it's very important everyone should have the like uh, uh, some um, different kind of seats and so that they can discuss uh, the position beforehand uh, so and meet the others this is very important and this was done uh, by the participants of these debates in a real life situation so i think 
uh, I've got still uh, not too much time, but still these are the instructions. And of course, the uh, students were asked to read the instructions, show them participants a list of different roles. And uh, it's very important that student uh, teacher should explain the rules of debates that will be used during the meeting. And of course, explain that there will be 30 minutes before actual meeting so that the people can meet other citizens. And the council meeting will last for 40 minutes. minutes. It's very important to give the uh, exact timing and of course uh, use the preparation phase to set up the space for the council meeting and ideally people should sit in a semicircle uh, but of course with the mayor at the front and slightly elevated position but partisan groups should be able to sit together and should place the name text on the table from. So it's very important to create this situation and during preparation phase. Uh, so it's very important uh, after 30 minutes, it should, citizens should be called for a meeting. And at the end of the meeting, after 40 minutes, mayor should call for a voting, etc. So these are actually procedures which need to be done. But once the preparation is done, believe me, everything will uh, go on in a uh, so great way. Uh, so I think that I'm, I will definitely finish but it's very important also not to omit the uh, phase of the briefing of e evaluation because it's very important to start the feedback round by greeting everyone by the real names and using then another technique allowing participants to give up the roles and head assumed during the simulation this is really important to do before starting the debriefing so uh, so this is very important and uh, uh, and for the very surprised by the result of the vote how much influence do you think you have how is it worth it to identify your role, etc. So this is very important because evaluation will definitely give us a real picture how they felt during debates and rules of debate that if you wish to speak, you should raise your hand. Yes, it should be comment, should be brief. Oh, these are all the rules which should be uh, so uh, so instructed and delivered to our learners. And these are the roles uh, with, with descriptions. Of course, I'm not going to read it. I'm going just to show that the mayor of the slip aisle, roll card, town council member, town council member, also diversity party representative, also a roll card for the members of the past and present association and roll card members of the youth action group uh, and uh, which are protecting human, human rights uh, movement and member of the Muslim association of the city and roll card citizens of the like global citizens, which are in the uh, so uh, majority. So I think that this was a kind of short overview uh, of how to teach debates. Uh, this was one of my experience of giving trainings, also in integrating debates into my different kind of classes. But I really wish you best of luck. I'm sure you do, you do use uh, debates. I, I'm sure your students love debates. And uh, if there are any questions, um, I, I'm here, I think, for if, I, if we have time. But thank you very much for your attention. And one more final request, I will be happy if you try to um, fill out my short one question survey about uh, so about teaching debates uh, at the end of at the end of this uh, webinar. I will be leaving in the chat this question. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let me let me find the question in the chat because I would like yes. to participate in the survey as well. <laughs> like I will do it right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Many participants of your webinar over, over I think uh, uh, there was a moment when there were 65 participants. Really? So that yes. Is, that is Thank huge. you very much. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay. I see. Here is the link. So I'm going to the link. And I hope Thank we you. are all yes to the link. Yes. Right. Actually, this is a question which I really want to uh, hear. And because I, I do incorporate debates in tertiary education, as I mentioned, but I really would like to uh, so hear the opinion in what do they think in which uh, ESP classes uh, debates uh, are important, legal English, maritime English, business English, or all. That's what I really would like to hear participants' opinion. So that's why I will be happy if they try to, yeah, so, so to answer it. Thank you very much. Okay, very well. Do you have to ask for access? Because when I, oh, maybe that's the next. Yes, you. I have to ask for access. 
as I see. So I'm asking, right? If not, it's not a problem. I will send it uh, to on your, or I will upload on your website if it's possible on ITF. Yeah, sure. And Polish. No problem. Yes. That is, that is, you know, we are teachers for teachers. <laughs> thank you very much, Lucina. Thank you very much for your support, and for, thank you very much for this. Um, it's a big gathering. Yes, I really hope that I will be more or less, I was more or less expect, meeting your expectation and uh, sharing my modest experience uh, of this uh, um, of this uh, 21st century skill. Uh, so, yeah, uh, hosting. Okay, so I will now stop.